The Brutale is a beautiful premium carbon aggressive skate that is completely handmade, which means it can be completely customized. Not to mention the fact that it is fully heat modal. This skate can probably get you one of the best fits in your life. But those premium features come at a premium price. This is one of the most expensive skates on the market and it also is one of the most unique feeling due to its cuffless design. And for those two reasons and more, I think it's really important that you know the following if you're considering buying them. The first thing I think you should really know about these skates is the fit. Now, like I mentioned earlier, they are a completely handmade skate, which does mean they can really tailor in the fit for you. Unlike most skates on the market, they're not limited to the shell sizes they make. So if you have a slightly wider foot, or if you're in between sizes, Adapt can actually tweak the sizes they offer to make it fit you better. And if you even just look at the top down of these skates, it is one of the more foot shaped skates on the market. It's not trying to be a point, it's actually the shape of a foot. I should also mention that these skates are made to order, which means it can take six to eight weeks for them to even be built, let alone shipped to you. So if you're international, it can be quite a long time before you get your hands on the skates. The way they do this sizing is quite thorough as well. If you want to, you can reach out to Adapt where they will help you find a skate that fits you. The way they do this is they ask for your most recent skate you're skating, what size you're skating that in, and then they ask for your foot mondo with photo proof to make sure you got the measurements right. Now this is miles above what any other skate brand can even offer, and it sounds like something that's so ideal and everything you'd ever want from a company, but I've found that it doesn't always work. For me, it didn't work at all. I got a custom boot made for my foot since I was in between sizes. I was told that I could downsize almost three sizes. And at this stage, I believe it was much too small for me and there's no breaking in I could do to make it happen. On the first session skating them, they felt way too small for me and they were so uncomfortable. Probably the most uncomfortable skates I've ever skated. But I was reassured by not only Adapt, but other people who skate Adapts that they break in and they eventually become the most comfortable skate you've ever skated. And the pressure points problems I was having with them could be solved by heat molding. Now I should mention that I've never had success with heat molding and I absolutely hate it, but I've really put in the work to heat mold these skates. I tried every option available to me to help fix these pressure points, whether that's just the usual heat mold where you put, heat the boot up, put your foot in it, or you try use things to push out pressure points. I could never fix the pressure points on these skates and at this stage, after heat molding them at least 20 times, they've made no improvement for me. And they're at the line where I can't skate through the pain to break them in. It's just impossible. Just having the skates on, like if I sit at my desk and have them on to break them in, they're way too uncomfortable for me to leave on. And that's not even skating. Now it's definitely possible that I'm an outlier and I just have weird feet here, but I have heard other people have similar issues with adapt skates. But I've also heard a lot of people say that they do start off pretty uncomfortable and they end up becoming the most comfortable skates they've ever skated. It's just part of the journey. So what I think you should know before getting these skates is that you need to be prepared for a skate that is not gonna be skatable out the box. It's gonna take a long time to break in and that breaking period could be quite painful. The next really important thing you should know about these skates is how they skate, the feel of them, because it is very different to any other skate on the market. And that is due to the fact that they don't have a cuff. It's not hidden behind the skin here. There's literally no cuff. This skate is built kind of like what a hockey skate is built like. I've never skated a hockey skate, so I don't know why I'm saying that, but I think if you like that feel of skate, you'd be more likely to like this skate. What that ultimately leads to though is a skate that is hard to adjust to. It'll be unlike anything you've skated before, meaning you're probably gonna lose some tricks pretty quickly and it's gonna take you a while to be able to get the basics again. I found this in my first session that I was having a very hard time. I was missing some of the super basic tricks uh, on rail, like soul tricks and stuff, like getting absolutely rolled just because of the way the ankle feels so different. The way I would describe it is it's kind of like instead of the skate moving with your ankle, your ankle's moving inside the top of the skate, which definitely frees your ankle up a bit and gives you a bit more natural movement to it, but it is a very different feeling for skating. So the benefits of this is you get a more responsive skate and a skate that feels way more solid. There's no kind of wiggly movie parts and you can feel that when you skate it. It feels like one solid piece and there's nothing clacking. And that's not just because of the cuffless design, it's the whole design in general. There is actually a somewhat corkboard looking bottom to the skate, which is so good at absorbing sound. It has the best land sound out of any skate I've ever skated. 
and that alone is a huge selling point i think it's something that you get addicted to man it's so nice i was worried that this design too would make it kind of painful when you're doing certain tricks especially top sides. i was worried that when you do a top side since the cuff doesn't move with your foot that it would just be stabbing into the side of you but i can happily say it doesn't i landed some of the best top sides i've ever done on any skate in these skates and that though i had a really rough first session my second session was so much fun dude i really saw why people like this skate it is so responsive and so fun to skate it slides so fast man so if you like a really responsive skate that gives you a close to grind feel and it sits a bit low on the ankle then you're probably going to really like this skate but if you need that ankle support and you don't have the patience for a long adjustment period on a skate then it's probably not for you so one thing you'd really expect from a skate in this price range is that it is built to last and that is a quality build and I can tell you that that is definitely the case. This is the only skate I've ever seen that has cut zero corners when it comes to materials used and the build in general. From the hardware to the sway on the boot, it is all the best of the best materials you could possibly use. These are designed to last years. I did get to test the hardness of the frame and the soles, and it is one of the hardest, most durable plastics I have ever skated. So unlike most skates, it is cut out of a solid block of plastic versus being mounted plastic put in a mold. And this makes it a lot more hard, which makes it more responsive, but also makes it last a lot longer. I skated the most rough, unwaxed ledge, did like 15-ish grinds, and they still looked brand new. I, this is something that would completely destroy a normal frame, did almost nothing to these frames, which I found super impressive. The downside to that is though, it's going to be hard to break them in. And I noticed this especially on Royales. Royales are my go-to trick. I do them the most out of anything. But on the symmetric frames, whether it was on the Adapt Skates or on my M12s, I found them hard to stay boot down. They would kind of stick and come in and out. And I put that down to the fact that I need to break the frames in. But they're so hard that it's a long journey to get that groove. When I was skating them originally too, I didn't have these 65 mil wheels in, I had 60s. And that's another thing I should note, the sole plate comes dremeled, ready to fit bigger wheels in frames. You don't have to do that yourself. They are also reversible, meaning you can swap the left with the right if you wear one out more than the other, making them last much longer. And the frame itself can either ride 60 flat or 65 flats like this, giving you a bit of extra speed if you want. It's hard to put an estimated time onto how long a skate will last because it depends on so many things from what you skate, how often you skate, you know, stuff like that, stuff out of my control. And also the fact that I didn't really get to break them in. But from my experience and the times I've been skating it and from what I've seen, this is an extra strong skate compared to the average skate on the market and should outlast them by a decent amount. And while we're speaking about them being built to last, this version of the Brutality actually had a couple of updates. The first one being that there is now a liner, or at least the adapt version of a liner, which is essentially just the heel part. And I think this does kind of get the best of both worlds, where you add a replaceable part that adds more life to the skate, but it doesn't take away from the responsiveness of it. It feels like part of the skate when I'm skating it. It doesn't feel loose. It feels different to a normal skate that has a uh, loose liner. It also gave me more options for heat molding. I could take that bit out and heat mold just the shower instead of also heat molding the cushion that is protecting your foot. The other thing they changed was on the frames. They made it so you only need one Allen key. One side of the bolt is like a hexagon shape and it works well. You only need one Allen key and there has been times though where I've forgotten what side needs the Allen key and I've spun the hexagon side and I've spun it multiple times and it hasn't done damage to the frame somehow. I can't believe it. Uh, but it still works despite that. You should also know that for an extra 100 euros ish, you can make the skate any color you want in a bunch of different ways. Every single part can be fully customized, essentially giving yourself your own pro skate. Another thing that might be important to you is how Adapt treats their pros. Now, one thing Adapt seems to be very good at doing is rescuing pros from shitty situations. Those pros that have been working really hard for other brands and getting nothing in return. Adapt swoops them up and gives them a well-deserved pro skate. They've done this multiple times and it's been really cool to see every single time. Another thing, it is not transparent. We don't know this for sure, but I have been told that they offer extremely good royalties for their pro skates. So they're really looking after their pro skaters every time they give them a pro product. But despite all these good things, like every brand, Adapt has had falling outs with pro skaters. 
But since it's such a small brand that's run by two very passionate rollerbladers who treat the brand like a family, it's led to some very public and bad falling out between pro skaters, some of the worst in the industry. So if that kind of stuff is important to you, I definitely recommend learning more about that before you buy these skates. Another thing I really wanna let you know about is the fact that Adapt did actually send me these for free to do a review, which is something they never do. They've always preferred to put out reviews and stuff themselves, but they took a risk on me to try it out. And uh, I'm extremely grateful for that. This is something that would never be possible for me to do normally. Adapt has enabled me to do. Despite this, I've done my best to make this video to inform me on everything I wish I would know if I was gonna spend this much on a skate. And that is everything I think you should know about the Brutality skate if you're considering buying them. But if you have any more questions, feel free to ask them below and I'll try to help you out. And this video took me around three days to film and edit, I'm assuming, not including the time to test the skates out. And it pays around about $5 per thousand views. So you can do the math and you can work out how it's very hard for me to put this much time aside to make these videos without the support of viewers like you. So if you wanna help me continue to do this like the people listed here, consider supporting my Patreon. I've given myself to the end of the year to get 100 patrons to be able to continue to put this much time into the product. So if you wanna help my dream come true and also get a bunch of other benefits, including exclusive videos and other things like that, then consider signing up. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And you should definitely watch this video here, which was my first day of skating the adapts and see the journey I went on.